The Fangirls Podcast is brought to you by Believe Podcast Network, and we want to take a moment and thank you for tuning into our podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that we can reach more people. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Hello and welcome to the Fangirls Podcast. I'm Lauren. And I'm Julie, and we are so excited to dish and spill the tea with you today. And today we are talking to the queen of tea, the incredibly talented L.A. Tea Sommelier, Tess. Tess is an expert in all things tea, but not only that, she loves to dish about her favorite fandoms. So we asked Tess to choose five teas and pair them with some of our favorite fandoms. But before we get into that, let's chat a little bit about you, Tess. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. All right, Tess, you got to start from the beginning. Where did your love of tea begin? My love of tea came from afternoon tea. As a little girl who wouldn't want to eat all these, you know, delicious and decadent treats and sandwiches and tea also sort of feel fancy. I think that was my gateway into tea, into the tea world. Yeah. I can relate to that. That is a good gateway. It started young, you know, early childhood. Yeah, so I think much fun. there was a, a trip in Washington, D.C. to the Four Seasons. I think I was in maybe fourth grade, you know, and it was like one of the best afternoon teas ever still in my memory. It's still one of the best. And I think from there it was like, OK, we've got to get more of this. You know, it's sort of also <laughs> the idea of a food and tea and just something special. All wrapped I up love in the one. that. Oh, right that is such feels. a good memory. I wish I had that. I didn't really get into tea until I was probably in my 20s. Wow. And now I'm going to have to take my girls to some fancy tea thing. So they will, well, my oldest, I've already converted her and she is like, she's moving to England. She's like, I'm over this tea (laughs) all day. Seriously, my oldest. Yeah. But the other one, I'm going to get, I'll get her hooked that way. There's some really good places in in LA and there's one of a really great one in Orange County too. So it's the Pelican Resort. Oh, Oh. Mm -hmm. they have a really exciting, fun, they sort of do a a different take on it, but they, they have these sandwiches that are works of art. And it's oh sort of gosh. Uh, a different approach to how, like, a, it's not the traditional afternoon tea. And then, you know, they also had some tea cocktails and the setting was Ooh. absolutely beautiful. And I sort bet. Of like the living room was great. So it's definitely recommend that one. So my question is, how long have you been a tea sommelier and kind of explain what that is? Sure. So I've been a tea sommelier since 2016. I I have my certification through the Tea and Herbal Association of Canada. What I really liked about this program was that it was, you actually had to take some time to learn all these Mm -hmm. things and they had different modules. When I was looking to do something like this and I was, you know, in Los Angeles and it's not as big of a tea place as other, other cities, unfortunately, although it is making strides to get, to get more into tea. I really wanted something that felt like you're getting a full education about tea. And some programs was, you know, they would say something like, oh, you can get your whole sommelier certificate in a day. And that felt sort of felt off to me. So I wanted to do something that really, you really got the full experience. So mine was through the Tea Association of Canada, now the Tea and Herbal Association of Canada. And they did online courses. There would be a discussion, there would be tastings and final exams for each one. And then at the very end, you would do a a blind uh, cupping. Wow. So you are a pro. It's definitely evident. And like when you were giving us the T101 yesterday, we were like, wow, she is a wealth of knowledge. And you've like retained it. Cause I know with my mom brain, if I'm not constantly repeating something that I've learned, it will like go out of my head. But that's probably the beauty of a tea sommelier is because you learned all this stuff, but then you get to share it with other people regularly or semi-regularly. And so, you know, it's probably part of your everyday life too, because you're always preparing tea. So I do have a lot of tea and I make it every day, multiple times. I will say, I'm glad it's a sort of sensory experience because right now I'm in the thick of mom brain and uh, (laughs) my, my word, the words that are coming to my head aren't always what I want them to be. So yeah. It's probably really grounding too, because it's like the act of doing it. You're physically putting the tea together, the smell, the taste. Moment of zen. Yeah, it's definitely a moment of zen. So here's the part of the show where we spill the tea. Yesterday, we had a super fun tea tasting with Tess. First, you walked us through Tea 101, and then we did a super fun fandom tea pairing. Why don't you go through each tea that you chose and the fandom that you paired it with and tell us your thoughts. I am so excited about this. This was such a fun collaborative idea and it was just great. Yeah. So yesterday we had this awesome uh, fandom and tea pairing. I had such a fun time with it. It was so fun to think about all the different shows. And I really wanted to come up with shows that you both really 
really liked and talked about in your podcast before. So it sort of resonate with your audience a little bit more as well, though there is one that I just had to put in, Uh just had to. So the first one is Bridgerton. So with the Bridgerton show, I paired a Gyokuro, things that I'm thinking about. So Bridgerton, it's a Shonda Rhimes show on Netflix, and it's set in the Regency era amidst London's high society. And the backdrop of the whole show is about sort of young women coming out into society. Yeah. So what I want to think about was these young women having one chance in their debut and sort of set in the traditions and expectations of that way of life. And of course, sort of the mystery of who is Lady Whistledown. Yes. So with this, I chose Gyokuro because it's a beautiful Japanese green tea and it's shade grown for the last 20 days before harvesting. I love this. The shade growing basically changes the chemical makeup of the leaf and makes it super green. So it's this vibrant, lovely green. It's just a beautiful color, sort of looks like a jewel. It's lovely. But I was thinking, you know, it's shade grown. So it's, you know, in the shadows. So sort of matching this mystery of who is Lady Whistledown. So just like, you know, Penelope secret persona lives in the in the in the shadows it gets its reputation from the shade just like a gyokuro this tea is also rare and beautiful it's green so it's a beautiful jewel just like each of these ladies are you know vying to be for the season and you know japanese tea let's say steeped in tradition you know no pun intended and um <laughs> steeped in tradition yes or pun intended for exactly. that pun yeah. definitely <laughs> intended yeah. So, and I think, you know, especially in, in something that's dealing with this, you know, English society and coming out and, you know, you have to do things a certain way. And, you know, that sort of felt like a, an interesting match as well, this sort of tradition and doing things a certain way, you know, with sort of the Japanese tea tradition as well. It's very methodical how tea is prepared. And also a thought that I had yesterday that I mentioned to you guys is, so these girls, before they're put out into society and brought before the queen, they're sheltered. They don't know anything. And just like this tea, it's like they're they're shade grown. They're grown in the shade. They're grown sheltered. Exactly. Something else I was thinking is that, uh, you know, we also know that Lady Whistledown likes to throw some shade. Yes. Yes. Love it. Oh, so perfect. I mean, it's like the most perfect tea pairing. And I, what I loved about this tea is that the flavor, it was just so light and fresh, like you were saying, like young and fresh. And then I'd say also a fun thing about most Japanese green teas is that the first time you have it, the flavor will be very umami forward. And for those of you who don't know, umami is sort of that savory taste or that extra one that isn't normally talked about. If you think of umami burger or something, yes, that sort of meaty, savory, mushroomy, wonderful flavor. So Japanese green teas are really, you know, they're really umami forward in the first brew. And then the next time you brew it or steep it, then it'll get more bitter and astringent. And so I think what's really cool about this, especially with sort of a, you know, who is it kind of show is, you know, it'll change your perception of the characters and what's going on really changes as you watch the show. And just like a Japanese green tea, that your experience of it will change as you sort of continue, continue drinking it. So I like that as well. I love it. What food would you recommend pairing with it? So for this one, I'm pairing it with a lemon petit four from Valerie Confections. Ooh. Um, ooh. Yeah, I mean, I think that sort of butteriness will, from like the cake and you know the frosting of it, will go nicely with the first one. But then also the lemon will really go nicely with sort of the the bitter astringent part. And you know, obviously, a little a petty four feels very perfect for for Bridgerton and high Absolutely. society. Absolutely. And I will yeah. say the the Gyokuro that we're drinking today is the one that I chose is from Tea Master in downtown Los Angeles. They have a great selection of teas and the best matcha frozen yogurt you've ever had oh yes that sounds good yes i like that you're pairing it with something citrus like something also that's like fresh definitely we're fresh fresh as a fresh as our our, our theme let's say yeah like today. a fresh and a clean like taste. definitely what do we have next sanditon i loved sanditon well i'm a jane austen a huge jane austen fan same as are same. you i know yeah yes so i thought i couldn't do a fandom pairing and not talk about jane austen because She's my favorite of anything. I love Jane Austen. I so mm-hmm. Sanditon, I, I thought it was also apt because we had the first season and now a second one's going to be coming out on Masterpiece. So we've got another one. So it feels very, you know, now. Yes. So yeah, the show is on Masterpiece. It's based off of the unfinished novel by Jane Austen. Mm-hmm. And our protagonist comes across a wealthy family. She uh, sort of the head of the family is trying to make Sanditon, basically a, a seaside resort and sort of a fancy destination. Yeah. So that's sort of how we get into this. 
and how we get to Sanditon, which is a, the name of the of the town. For this pairing, I'm really honing in on our main character, which is Charlotte Haywood. And Charlotte is a poor girl, and she comes into favor with the sort of the more wealthy family. That's how she sort of gets into Sanditon because they're trying to make it a place. And so she gets to stay with them, which I love back then. It's like, oh yeah, just come stay with me for extended periods of time and it's fine. We'll pay for everything. No big deal. Yeah, that'd be nice. But can we all find wealthy people to just take us and stay for free anywhere? Right. Yeah, at their seaside <laughs> hotel. Exactly. Yeah, it'd be great. Exactly. For this one, we're going to pair the Smith Tea Rose City Genmaicha. If you've never had a Genmaicha before, it is a Japanese green tea that is mixed with either puffed rice or puffed corn. Got that lovely briny and fresh and bright colors from the from the sencha. And then you also have nutty, roasty, toasty notes coming from the puffed rice. For this particular one, there's also some rose in it as well. So that the tea itself, when you look at the, the tea dry, it it's you know got that nice green, it's got the lovely puffed corn, but then our puffed rice, but then it also has it also has the, the lovely rose petals as well. So for this one we really do see the the bloom of youth from Charlotte Haywood matched in the in the rose petals tea. This tea is or at least Genmaicha is normally, it's sort of started as a, let's say a poorer person's tea. Mm -hmm. It was just a little bit cheaper because with the addition of the rice, uh, it sort of brought the overall cost of tea down because of the bulk wine. There was more sort of non-tea in it as well. I thought it was perfect for Charlotte because she does come from the sort of poorer yeah. background. She's, but it's still this beautiful tea and it's really popular and people, especially now people love Genmaicha. It's crowd favorite, just like Miss Haywood. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was uh, very popular. She was just, yeah. I mean, everyone likes her, you know, it's got that beautiful floral notes as well. And actually Japanese green tea, Japan, Japan, it's an island. So sometimes there's some sort of brininess to it. And I thought, oh, great, because Sanditon is a seaside town. So we've got sort of, you know, maybe you could imagine drinking it there. You've got marine notes as well, which is nice. This is the only tea that in our pairing that's a tea bag. Everything else is loose leaf. Yeah, it was interesting. This tea, the taste and the smell. So you smell it first mm -hmm. and you kind of get this almost like the ocean has to be nearby. Like somehow the breeze is like, like are we blowing. in Sanditon? Yeah. yeah. The breeze is like blowing and you're walking right past like a, a rose bush or a flower bush or something. It was it tasted very floral, but something about the scent, it was like, am I close to the sea? It was definitely very experiential, this tea. I loved it. It's nice the one. daintiest tea bag I've ever seen though. The Smith tea, they do, they do nice tea bags. Yeah. And to tap the scent of it, I smelled not just floral notes, but like I smelled Fruit Loops. It was <laughs> love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I could take from. And I was just like, oh, this is going to be really good. And it was crowd favorite. Yeah. Crowd fave. I get it. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's, tea. It's, it's really nice. And I, I do think that, you know, while some of it might not be as expensive as some of the other ones, they have like a really good product. And um, I thought it was perfect for Charlotte. Awesome. Okay. So what little tea treat would you pair with this tea? So for this one, and maybe we get your daughter in the room, Lauren, uh, I thought we could do a Victoria sponge. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I sort of wanted to place us in, you know, in England and have this treat that sort of brightness from the tea and floral notes. I've been wanting to try to make that because I've seen it made on the Great British Baking Show like a hundred times. Like they always are making Amazing a show. Victoria Amazing sponge. Show. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to do this one day. I know I can bake, but I'm like afraid. Can I, do th it. I think I'm going to give it a try. And then you can order the Rose City Good Mind go with it. Yes. Amazing. And then where can we get this tea? This is from Smith Tea. You can get it online or if you live awesome. in um, sort of the Pacific Northwest, it's available in grocery stores. Oh, Amazing. That's very so nice. cool. What do we have next? I'm very excited about this one, actually. Okay. Yeah, so this one, I tried to not do too many super obvious pairings, but for me, this one felt it was like immediately obvious. You had to. You I had, had to. to. I, could, I agree. Uh, yeah. So we're going to do Game of Thrones. And with this one, I'm pairing the aged Phoenix Dancing Oolong. You know, I'd say whether you like how the show ended or not, it was an incredible series with an even more incredible slew of characters. I agree. Talk about ensemble cast, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for me, the one of the most remarkable characters was Danny Khaleesi, mother of dragons. Mm -hmm. For the last season, for me, she was just one of the most amazing female characters on TV. You know, she was tough, smart, kind, resourceful, calculating, powerful. Um, absolutely maternal feminine sexual but not overly sexualized it's just not a an easy sort of combo to put on tv often I feel like you fall in a trope of something I don't know she was great it's refreshing to see complicated women portrayed on television and it have is. that be fine 
you know, it's not strong. Have it be bad. Right. Exactly. Not have it be yeah. a detriment to their character. Yeah, for sure. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Didn't you say Oolong translates to dragon? It means black dragon. Yeah. That, Oolong like, means black dragon. That's this crazy. Is crazy. You had, you had to do you it. Had you had to know? do it. Absolutely. So, and this one in particular, just like Danny's ability to walk through fire, the tea I've selected has gone through multiple fire roastings. Love it. Oh, the theming is beautiful. It's just so good. Yeah. So poetic. It, it is. And, you know, this tea, it's from Tea Habitat, also in Los Angeles area. And she does have a website online, so you can get it there. The tea has layers. It's complex, just like mm-hmm. Danny. You know, there's a sweetness to it. It's really smooth. It's got a beautiful color to it. I mean, I'm holding it up so you guys can see it, but it's just beautiful. Yeah, when I was brewing it, it was so much lighter than I thought oolong was. Yeah. And then when I saw your cup, that it was the same color, I was like, okay, I didn't mess this up. <laughs> yeah, and I think for this one, um, again, just like Danny, you know, it's it's better for coming out of the fire. It's got more depth and complexity to it. Um, it's so good. I mean, she went through one of the biggest transformations on that show. I can't I mean, I don't see how yeah. anybody else could beat the transformation that she yeah. did. And brewing tea and the process of tea, especially oolong, it's like that is a transformative process. Yes, it's quite complex. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And you have to be quite expert to do it. So yes, I thought, and this is just such a lovely tea. And what food would you pair with it? Okay. So this one, I, you know, again, trying to get maybe a little too on the nose. I went with the lavender and burnt sugar ice cream from Ginger's ice cream. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the, you know, fire and ice. So it's burnt sugar and ice cream, you know, and then the lavender is not the sort of perfumey aspects of, of this kind of oolong and, you know, Sometimes I get floral notes, so I thought, and there's a little bit of sweetness, so I thought it would sort of be a nice pairing. That is, that's not something that I would think of to add to pair it with something that's cold. But I I was really going again hot and you know hot and cold, fire and ice, just really you know like trying to to bring in the theme a little bit. Okay, so what do we have next? All right, next we have shadow and bone. You guys mentioned this in our in our talk, and I thought, Mm -hmm. let's try shadow and bone. There was one that sort of jumped out at me, Um, so. Shadow and Bone, I thought, let's do a Russian caravan. And for this particular pairing, I'm doing the Campfire Caravan from my friends at Paru Tea. For this one, for Shadow and Bone, I was thinking, you know, there's these different societies separated by distance. It feels more sort of segregated than now. Definitely a sort of before globalization sort of feel. Mm -hmm. And our main character, Alina, she's sort of a mix of these Chinese and Russian type of cultures. And the main thing here, that sort of, you know, societies, if you want to get somewhere, you have to go through this treacherous journey to sort of yeah. get to another place. So I thought Russian caravan, it definitely has, you know, in the name, it's got that you know sort of Soviet-esque feeling to it, but you know, itself, it's a blend of Chinese teas. It's a Lapsang Sushong usually, and you know, Oolong, which again, those are Chinese teas. You sort of, it's named, you know, it's named after the sort of land trade route. This is perfect. So this particular one, the campfire one, it's Lapsang Sushong Oolong, and it actually has saffron in it. And I thought, how great is that? When you see the tea, you know, after you put it in water, the actual tea itself, not the liquid, got this lovely golden stripe. Yes. And I thought, there she is, the sun summoner uh-huh. amidst the shadows. Here's our golden stripe of the saffron. So how perfect that they have this extra bit of saffron in it. It makes it really pretty and adds a little softness to it. And, you know, just like Alina, our tea blend here gives you this sort of sense of several cultures and tastes coming together. Some people add jam to Russian caravan. I I haven't been, I don't know, but that's what I've, that's what I've heard. And it it does sort of have that, you know, the sweet and the smoky. What flavor of jam would you use? You know, I've done it with peach jam and I liked it, but you could really do lots of, you know, I think any jam would be nice. Just anything that sort of adds that sort of sweetness and smokiness. It feels like this blending of cultures and it's smoky and it's dark and sort of mysterious. And I thought that paired really nicely with the show. Yeah, it was a very experiential tea because it smells like a campfire and it also tastes like a campfire, but there's so many layers to it. Yes. You can just imagine like Alina and Mao, like sitting around the campfire and, you know, with all the troops around them in the tents, but you could also see her like being served this by the darkling because perhaps he liked it too. And it like gives her that feeling of home. And I think for me, this tea literally tasted like shadow and bone to me. Like yeah, I, what I would I think, think so shadow and bone would taste like as a tea, mm-hmm. it's Russian caravan. Yeah, I think so too. And I, yeah, and again, I thought that the the campfire one, the, the special blend from Paruti with the 
the golden stripe of exactly. her. It was like, oh my oh, god, this so game was perfect. I mean, she's brilliant. What was her name? The lady who made the tea. Um, well, the the tea company is Paru Tea, P A R U Tea, mm-hmm. and they actually they have a place in uh, San Diego, and they're opening another one in La Jolla. Um, so if you you know if you're in LA, you want to take a nice little beach trip, head on down there. I will say for this one for the pairing, I thought I would do. Uh, blini and caviar i thought let's go you know maybe Ooh, the campfire so okay. sort of the you know like roughing it in the woods with the tea and then let's go to the castle for yes. a pairing and sort of that <laughs> salty caviar. yeah it's the salty with the with the caviar the golden color of the eggs you know like you know if we do that or we could do something else but that sort of shininess to it and it would go nicely with the sort of smoky and sweet tea as well i love it you're blowing my mind with the stuff test. yeah it's just this- blowing my mind now let's just go get some caviar together. Right. right. I mean, I'm, I love theming. We love theming. We've done themed dinner. So for us, we're just like, yes, someone else who loves love doing theming. this. Yeah. Yes. I have a good, good friend of mine. We always like to do themed dinners. It's, it's great. It's just this amazing. particular tea, this caravan, I have to say like stuck out the most too, because everything else was so light in general. And then boom, the caravan hits. And the darkling is here, right? I was just like, okay, now I know what the darkling drinks on, you know, in his free time. Here we, here we go. Yeah, Yeah, no, it was so good. And it just, it stood out. So it's so different. So different. I didn't even know tea like this existed. Cause same. Usually think green tea or like black tea, but this was just, I was like, what? This exists. Exactly. So good. You can smell it from a mile away. It's you very can, too. You, know, you, you um I actually like to grind it down and I'll mix it with cream cheese and some smoked salmon and do a little like it's quite delicious. Oh. I could see it being in a good rub too for you know barbecue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be oh, a really good. good call. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. And I love smoked salmon. I would salmon do just though. straight lapsang souchong instead of the, the blend. Obviously, the blend someone took the time to put it together, might as well. Yeah, might as well brew it. Yeah. Okay, so we have our final tea pairing mm-hmm. our, with our favorite show. Here we go. I thought with Outlander, let's do Puer. Yep, this is a fermented and aged tea. So for this, I'm thinking a play between past and present. There's also complexity, but sort of tender and sweet moments. And like sort of this very, you know, it's also sexually explicit, let's say. Mm. It's maybe Just sort of a little. <laughs> um, and it's sort of niche, but those that love it, love it. So puer is an aged tea. It's fermented and it's got a very, very distinct flavor and aroma. It's deep in color. Sometimes it's almost purpley. It's really pretty. So I thought, you know, let's do puer with Outlander. Today it's the aged, it's the old ripe tree puer from Monsa Tea. They do a really lovely I mean, the whole thing is HT, so you can't go wrong if you're looking for something from Monza. For this, I thought, all right, by drinking an HT, you're really going back in time. And Outlander, right? Yeah, you're absolutely. Experiencing the past. You're, you're experiencing the past. So here we are with Claire going back in time, just like this. We're drinking, we're drinking Puer. We're going back in time and sort of seeing a, seeing a, a crop that existed back in time. It's also very, it's velvety, it's smooth, and it's sort of sensuous. Um, mm-hmm. So I was thinking this romance between Jamie and Claire, got that sensuousness, that sort of tenderness. I'd say if you've never, if you've never, ever experienced Puer, some people, you know, I think it's lovely, but some people might say it's a little dirty smelling. I thought, eh, Outlander, it's a little dirty. It is a little <laughs> dirty. But it's also, again, it's got that velvety, lovely smoothness to it that this tea is just great. And um you know, on the, I thought this was sort of fun too. So the website on the product page, the description, right? It says that, have you ever walked the forest after rainfall, the moist ground with wood chips that bring rich earthy aroma and a calming comfort to you? Uh, oh so, my gosh. Right. And I'm like, okay, Ugh. there we are. We're in Scotland back in the day, walking through yeah. the forest, watch out, you know, get away from the Brits. Here we go. And, you know, maybe you're campfire and enjoying this sort of lovely cup of tea. And I thought this, this place is me there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We were joking yesterday. Cause you're like, it's dirty. It's aged. And the, Julie was ear like, this is the essence of Jamie. Yes. <laughs> Here's totally. Jamie, Jamie in a cup. Here's Let's Jamie drink it cup. down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Gulp that down again. Oh, yeah. Ahead. It's, it's complex. It's layered. It's got so much to it. Just how you'd want Jamie to be really. So for the pairing for Outlander, I was thinking, all right, you know, again, we're in the wilderness. We're probably around a fire. 
So let's do a dark chocolate s'mores. So dark chocolate goes mm. really well with where? <sighs> and so I thought a little bit of extra, you know, that sort of char on the marshmallow. I love s'mores. I love and then that. if I may, I did a bonus pairing. Oh, go tell for us. it. Let's do Ted Lasso. We'll do a cup of coffee with shortbread because some of you might not want hot brown water. Love it. I bet a lot of our listeners appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Like- and it's a great show. I mean, Ted Lasso is amazing. <laughs> He's very lovable. He is. He is. Yes. Indeed. Okay. So here's one of my favorite parts of the show. When we interview somebody, we do rapid fire questions. So Tess, are you ready? No, but let's do it. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite tea? Oolong. Oolong. Okay. What's your favorite fandom? Jane Austen. Yes, ma'am. There we go. If you could have prevented the death of any book, TV, or movie character, who would it be? Lady Sybil. Oh, me too. What is the last show that you binged? Uh, Miracle Workers. Nice. Mm. If you could have tea with your two favorite book characters, who would they be? That's a good question. Elizabeth Bennett. Let's do Lizzie and her sister, Jane. Why not? Yes. Jane and Lizzie. I love that. I'd love to see how they interact, you know? Yes, for sure. Okay. Tessa, where can we find you on Instagram? LAT sommelier. And we will put that in the show notes. Well, Well, thank thank you you. so much. Yeah. Thank you. This was fun. So much fun. This is amazing. We'll have to do with pairing with the food in person at some point. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. We'll get together at uh, Danny's. Oh, cause she would, she would want to be a part of this for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so so much, much, Tess. Tess. We are so excited to have launched our Etsy store that has a variety of custom-made digital downloads designed by yours truly. For this week only, September 15th through the 21st, we are offering 20% off our Etsy store with the code T20. The link to our store and all the info will be in the show notes. This coupon is only available to those who have listened to this episode. The fangirls are so appreciative of our faithful listeners, and we want to say thank you. For the first three five-star written reviews on Apple Podcasts we receive from September 1st on, we will email you a special gift. Email us a screenshot of the review at thefangirlspodcast at yahoo.com to enter. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast to hear all of our latest episodes. Visit our Etsy store and explore our collection of fun fandom digital downloads. We want to connect with our fellow fans, so give us a follow on Instagram at thefangirlspodcast and Twitter at the underscore fan underscore girls and like our community page on Facebook to join the conversation. See you next time. See you next time. We here at the Fangirls Podcast LLC are not affiliated with the following. Any of the tea companies that we mentioned today or any of the fandoms that we mentioned today. We're just really big fans. And we love to drink tea. All the time.